So the slides, just referring to the reflector, um, these lunar beings, they're special. They're only 1% of the population. Um, their truth, as in for all of us, um, comes right from our body. Just literally, it comes from within always. It's never a mental construct. We can't think what is true. And the reflector embodies that um, while they see it all the time in the others. So they, they get it from both ends. Uh, leading questions would be, um, does this decision feel right? Um, uh, again, Open G Center, am I in the right place? Um, leading questions, is there something healthy or unhealthy here um, in within they? And uh, another incredible leading question is this existential question, which is, who are they? Who are the people? Who, who's this? What's my milieu is what they're after. Um, and this decision frame, well, it takes on two different things. Um, there's all humans can decide in the now, period. That's just the thing. It's just that the bigger the decision, the more it takes a full 28 and a half days. Uh, that's approximately the time it takes the moon to circle um, planet Earth. So this waiting time for a long time, a little time, almost no time, is something that the reflector has to feel out for themselves because they'll find, again, their truth as not a mental construct, but more a feeling inside the body that feels good is going to take the time that it Intuition for reflecting, it originates externally. Um, it originates from, well, from everywhere, from, from presenting clear choices at the right time. And what it does is you can tell with this lunar authority as it goes to this intuition for reflectors, um, this inner authority of theirs, and it is an inner authority. Every type has an inner authority, even though it's called an outer authority for those people who know what I'm talking about. But this inner authority for, um, for the lunar being is really the type of inner authority that has to, it just has to mature is all I can really may impulsively seek immediate answers um, due to conditioning, hindering their ability to receive intuitive guidance. Um, their design mandates that decisions unfold rather than um, being made based on present emotions or circumstances. Really and truly, this inner authority for, for them comes from the fact that their body graph is completely open. And so what happens is this inner authority can't be, it can't be physically decided upon until you've gone through enough time where various gates in your body graph are being, uh, are being attached on the other side, getting their polarity on the other side, um, defining a whole channel. So what every lunar being needs to do to truly understand their authority is witness which gates um, activate a whole channel at the end of another gate that's activated in your body graph. So it's ever in your body graph now, there are um, gates that will come along through the transits of the moon that will activate them and create a channel. And those keep changing your inner authority as it relates to temporarily. But your whole inner authority is the sense of knowing that this motion is going on. And then with that, the body still gives the decision. All types have the same thing going on. They all have, it feels good or it doesn't feel good. And I hearken back to the kid the five-year-old, the four-year-old inside of us, and an axiom, a, a rule in human design. It's a law, really, that the kid is always right as it relates to what's correct for you. Doesn't mean you can always do it, but the kid is always right. And so you have to learn to get in touch with what would my younger self have done, you know, and you know what your younger self did. You'll see as you start to pay attention to these transits. So this more on the lunar authority is, you already love the moon. I've never met a reflector that doesn't watch the moon. Watch the moon. Watch the gates. It is literally um, activating in your body graph. And, and witness that each channel that then gets turned on, because um, all of your activations will become a channel, every single one in your body graph. Keep that in mind. Witness how it feels over each lunar cycle. And then in the now, um, are you surprised? Are you not surprised? So this is the strategy that helps you get in touch with this inner authority. This sense of surprise for the lunar being is, uh, it's, a, it's a deep thing. The sense of surprise is something that um, should feel really warm 
and good. It's not just a, oh, someone surprised me with, you know, my favorite drink. Uh, you know, my coffee was just right. That's a nice surprise. I'm talking about all the way up to this is an amazingly feels good, life changing, wonderful surprise. That's what feels good to the lunar being. And the disappointment on the other side is something to look out for. Because just like our last guest was saying, um, oh, it's so wise of her to bring this up. Um, her strategy about the bitterness for the projector, that's one thing. And then on the lunar being, it's disappointment. As you start to sense disappointment, literally look around. Your environment isn't right. You are not in the right place. Your decision making is not working very good. It's leading to the frustrations and the not self themes of all four types, one way or another. The anger, the frustration, the being, you know, not liking it, the bitterness, the disappointment is sort of a culmination of all those because part of what this inner authority is leading you to, if you're a lunar being, is to witnessing what's healthy in the rest of humanity. Um, so this is the inner authority, and it's very nuanced. You have to talk to them to understand the seven steps during decision making. Upon receiving the decisions, note the current moon phase and give yourself 28 days until the next one. Um, yeah, that's this is what I was mentioning before. So as soon as there's a moment for decision making, and it's like it's anything bigger than what you can decide right now, please capture the gate. Go online, just look it up, put in a body graph at just now chart on our website. And it'll show you um, what gates are attached on the other side. Make a note of that and then start to wait. You may not need to wait the whole 28 days, but you'll 28 and a half, but you'll start to find out that plenty of times it feels good too, because lunar beings love a broad swath of time um, to have the option to wait it out or not. In other words, if a lunar being said, hey, if someone told them, hey, there's no such thing as a calendar, uh, but everything's still going to go fine. Oh, they would love that. Um, take away the clocks and the watches, and that might be pretty cool too. Um, every day during this 28 period, um, the note here says to reflect on the, you know, the identity and the feeling, and to look inward um, regarding the decisions and observing without the the pressure of judgment. Yeah, this is taking the pressure off. So no clocks, no time, no no calendar. Um, if you experience clear certainty uh, and inner knowing um, by the end of the 28 days, or I would add anywhere along the way, uh, when, when the moon does return, it is time to act. And if you receive it and understand it before the moon returns, um, definitely act and then make a note of when that 28 days would have been up from when you first started. If clarity eludes you, consider it a no for now and allow another 28 days this is something big when this happens and you can't get to anything you're going to have a big surrender to make because the truth is humanity is conditioned by generators we're in a generated world and everyone wants to go 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 and feel the sense of now if you put the world together we're an emotional manifesting generator if you move into any room <clears throat> we're an emotional manifesting generator and if you're around any more than three or four people, you, that's an emotional manifesting generator. Um, so keep that in mind. Take the time it takes, surrender into that moment. Regularly assess your feelings and observe how they influence your decisions. Yes, and your feelings and your sensations. So feelings to me is a little bit also emotional. Sensations are not just the sensations in your body there's millions of them and there's thousands of them that you know um it doesn't matter what they are what matters is that you're witnessing this um regularly assess the feelings and observe how they influence your decision that's sort of a journaling item and that this is very much i would talk this through with any one reflector at the at the time to find out what they they will and won't do just to witness this take place Remember, for the reflector, it's all about witnessing. You have a very special aura we'll get into in a moment. Um, if any kind of fear hinders you, um, your sense or your authority or inside, allow yourself extra time. That's sort of obvious. Um, ultimately, you're asking yourself, does this feel right? Do I feel pleasantly surprised? Do I feel good? And if the answer is yes, obviously move on. Um, 
primary conditioning is pressure to rush absolutely fear of the fear of trusting yourself um and i would add the fear of trusting others because your question is you've got a genetic question in you that says who are you i mean literally um excuse me who are they and and what's my arena look like and what's going on here including who are they um fear that taking time will lead uh, to stagnation or falling behind all of that is true anxiety over acknowledging um these fluctuating feelings towards decisions yeah it's called emotional nervousness and mental nervousness the pressure centers pressure our awareness centers to get nervous and fearful um this is something to surrender to by the way when we get to it uh reliance on others such as patterns or family um to make decisions uh but by the way you're supposed to rely on others throughout this 28 days you're going to talk to lots of people and what will happen is the kindest the kindest feeling coming in on you as you talk to people is going to be the most helpful to you it's just always sort of that way and it again it doesn't mean you do what they say you're going to talk to lots of people don't forget with this question burning inside of you or of who are they who's in my group do i like it this is your question and with that being the case this anxiety over what others might think and do that's one thing but allowing them in to basically bounce things off of all the time is really good too um desire to conceal the sensitivity or appear a certain way that you're not well this is open ego conditioning it's there all the time um it's in everyone with an open ego and it's everything else too but it starts there um so tips for you um when overthinking decisions visualize this white light in your well just visualize what is it that's coming in and allow yourself time to almost meditate on it what i call it is is just sort of going into a daydreaming process where you're not thinking about anything allow yourself time to check out and bring in a sensation like a white light like a memory like something that you dig to just muse on m-u-s-e um look that up if you don't know what it means uh establishing journaling routine is always going to be good um jotting it down on a piece of paper recorded notes are handy um using a moon calendar you have to make a moon calendar for yourself this this is more than just a tip um it's something you really you just want to do and you're going to love it when you see it um good habits to get into um establishing that routine um using the moon to count uh using the moon to go through things this is good enough for tips this other good tips are waiting for your friends um to go ahead and be part of your group and keep seeing that you like it uh these are good habits is vetting your friends um establishing this cleansing ritual moana writes down here of being around uh you know many people yeah walk out into society a lot and then walk back away don't interact with anybody this is a good habit walk through um contacting the friends that feel good each day make sure you say hi and watching when you're surprised versus when you're disappointed and the surprise is all the way up to an amazingly feeling good and the disappointment is all the way down into depression and feeling so disappointed that everything sucks these are journal those moments because as you start to see up seeing it aligns it all and makes it all fix itself um so the kid is always right and seeing it puts it in alignment